Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Last fall, when soccer star Megan Rapino retired from women's soccer, she thanked the fans and reminded everyone about her activism outside the sport itself. We fought so hard off the field to continue to create, to continue to create more space for ourselves to be who we are, but hopefully in turn more space for you guys to be who you are. But that, it turns out, was a lie. Rapino and other members of the new Inquisition only believe that you deserve space and freedom of expression if you're expressing agreement with them. A 20-year-old player named Corbin Albert just learned a hard lesson about the limits of the sport's sisterhood when she outed herself as a Christian on social media. What was her crime? Well, she reposted a video on TikTok that questioned the trans ideology. Well, after seeing that, Rapino responded, scoffing at people who hide behind their beliefs, and added, I would just ask one question. Are you making any type of space safer, more inclusive? Because if you aren't, all you believe in is hate, and kids are literally killing themselves because of all this hate. Wake up. Wake the bleep up. So much for Megan's goal of creating space for others to be their authentic selves. Her distortion of Christianity is both ignorant and intolerant. It's even bigoted. Unfortunately, Corbin bowed down to the Rapino-led woke mob and issued a very sad apology for her post saying that she was disappointed in herself and sorry for offending people and that people should feel safe and respected everywhere. The fact is Christians can't and don't feel respected in this environment. For them, the choice is hide your beliefs, or be subject to vicious condemnation that could effectively end your entire career. Joining me now is someone who has felt the wrath of these people, Riley Gaines, OutKick contributor and host of Gaines for Girls podcast. Riley, great to see you tonight. Now, beyond this uh, obnoxious Rapino herself, who's really to blame here? I think there's a lot of fingers to point in this scenario. Uh, ultimately, understand this is trickling down from the top. If we're talking specifically about the attack on Christianity, obviously, as we saw on Easter Sunday, the most holy of Christian holidays, uh, the Biden administration, the people in the White House leading this nation, leading in air quotes, of course, uh, a actively proclaimed this holiday as Trans Visibility Day. And I thought it was so ironic, Laura, that he goes on to Twitter, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, and he posts, um, you know, happy Trans Visibility Day. Understand you are made in God's image. He did not finish that verse because after this, it says male and female. And God created us perfectly and intentionally in his image. And to alter that, to try and alter that um, is a sin. What this administration is doing, trickling down from the top. Uh, understand this is their new religion. They want to abdicate religion as a whole. Um, but for Re Megan Rapinoe herself, I believe she's a sellout. I believe she's hell-bent on 
the destruction of traditional American values. Uh, I think using her influence to harass someone into compliance is typical, seemingly a of leftist. Twenty-year-old, absolutely. She is a bully. Yeah, she's a complete bully. Yeah, I mean, she's just—it's classic, classic schoolyard bully. Well, the current co-captains, Riley, of the women's national team weighed in on the controversy yesterday. Watch. We've worked extremely hard to uphold the integrity of this national team, and we are extremely, extremely sad that this standard was not upheld. We stand by maintaining a safe and respectful space, especially as allies and members of the LGBTQ plus community, and we'll keep using this platform to give attention to causes that are important to us. Well, I don't know what they'll feel when ultimately women's soccer becomes just another version of men's soccer for men who couldn't make it in the actual men's category. So maybe they'll feel uh, more included then. I'm not really sure. I know it. Um, listening to these two amazing phenoms in soccer um, say that they're allies to the LGBTQ community, that seemingly means that they're not allies for women. Um, I was super bummed to see uh, where Corbin essentially folded came down on her beliefs. Uh, I believe in a world where conformity is king. Standing firm in your beliefs isn't just courageous, it's revolutionary. No apologies, no backing down. Own your convictions, shatter the mold, and command respect. Uh, I believe true power comes from being unapologetically you. And I wish we could have seen Corbin stand by her beliefs. Yeah, that would be real girl power. But she's 20 years old, and she has her whole life ahead of her. And it's not easy being you, Riley. There are not many of you. We need more. Great to see you. Brothers and sisters, persecution is here. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared, because true Christians will be persecuted like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right, and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians, and Scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well, as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things. Fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is here. This is what the coming of spring can look like in Russia. The Ural River, Europe's third longest, bursting its banks and rising. Floodwaters caused by winter snow melting in the Adenburg region have swept through thousands of homes. The mayor says people should leave if they can, before it's too late. I didn't want to leave. I thought I'm too old and wouldn't go, but they persuaded me. I want to wail, not just cry. I feel terrible. The river first burst through this dam in Orsk, flooding the city. The region's governor says flooding has been recorded along the entire two and a half thousand kilometer long river that flows through Kazakhstan into the Caspian Sea. Russian officials say 39 regions have or will be affected. Controlled explosions are being carried out in ice and snow in some regions to prevent further flooding. And farmers are pulling out cattle stuck in the mud. Rescue and relief efforts are underway. 
The Russian Emergencies Minister says the flooding is the worst the region has seen in decades. We even bought a boat yesterday so that we can reach our relatives if something happens to bring them first aid or medicine. Water levels are expected to continue rising for at least another two days. Jesus declares this in Matthew 24, 37-39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus tells us in verse 37, when our days parallel the days of Noah, he is returning. One of the things that parallel our days with the days of Noah is the unprecedented flooding the world has been experiencing over the last few years. Jesus goes on to tell us in verses 38 and 39 that when he returns, things will be going on as normal as people will be eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Just as in the days of Noah, when people were caught off guard and the flood came, so also will people of our time be caught off guard when Jesus returns. A major shift in the war against Hamas. Israel has pulled out a key division from southern Gaza. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu declared that victory is a step away. Yesterday marked six months since the October 7th Hamas invasion. Hostage families gathered together in Jerusalem and Washington, D.C. to demand the release of their loved ones. CBN's Chris Mitchell has more. Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, says the pullout is a sign that Hamas is severely weakened as a fighting force. Hamas ceased to function as a military organization throughout the Gaza Strip. But within an hour, Hamas terrorists were firing rockets at seven Israeli communities from the area the IDF troops had just left. On the tactical level, what you can read into it is that the IDF is pulling out troops in order to get them some rest and time to reorganize in order to be prepared for the next stage of missions. That's one way of looking at it. Jonathan Canricas, a former IDF spokesman and a lieutenant colonel in the reserves, says that next stage of mission would be an invasion of Rafa. He also says the move can be seen as a result of American pressure. There was a few days ago an important and reportedly heated conversation between the president and the prime minister. And uh, demands were made, and you could think that what Israel is doing now is an implementation of those demands. Kanrika says the IDF is also preparing for a greater conflict with Hezbollah. Time will have to tell, and we will have to wait which one of the options it was, but it could be either one or a combination of all. Still, as fighting reaches the six-month mark, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu sees the elimination of Hamas just ahead. We're marking today six months of war. We're one step away from victory. Netanyahu and Gallant insist on an invasion of Rafa, where Hamas's last intact battalions are holding up. As it has for weeks, the White House disagrees. All I can do is say what I said before. We don't support a major ground operation in Rafah. That has not changed. And we're looking forward to having conversations with the Israelis about alternatives to those kinds of operations. Netanyahu says his government won't buckle to international pressure on a ceasefire without freedom for the hostages. I made it clear to the international community there will be no ceasefire without the return of hostages. It just won't happen. I'm joined by a member of Israel's Knesset and former Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Dannon. So U.S. officials are being asked about Israel withdrawing much of its ground forces from southern Gaza. Let's play this clip and I will have you respond, sir. It is really just about rest and refit for these troops that have been on the ground for four months and not necessarily that we can tell, indicative of some coming new operation for these troops. They've been on the ground for four months. Uh, the, the, the word we're getting is they're tired, they need to be refit. What do you say, Danny? Let me be very clear, Mike. The war is not over. It's far from being over. We will continue the war until we bring back all the hostages back to Israel and eliminate Hamas. And we are getting ready for the next uh, operation in Rafa, in the city of Rafa. Uh, I think we will wait a few more days if there will be no deal about the hostages, we will step into this city. We will uh, fight the Hamas battalions who are there, uh, and we will uh, see what we can do about releasing the hostages. There are concerns about Iran potentially retaliating against Israel and potentially American interests. If Iran lashes out, is Israel ready? 
First of all, we, we take those threats uh, seriously. We, we are on high alert here in Israel, but, uh, you know, life is continuing, but the military has very impressive uh, air defense system. And I can tell you as former uh, Deputy Minister of Defense that uh, I feel that we are ready for any threat coming from Iran. And if they will dare to send the uh, UAVs or missiles from Iran to Israel, they will pay a heavy price. Uh, we hope it will not happen. We have no interest to to start uh, another front with Iran. So far, they're using proxies against us. But if they will make that mistake, they will pay a heavy price. Well, dozens of rockets have been launched from Lebanon into the occupied Golan Heights. Hezbollah fighters say they targeted an Israeli base and air defence post. The attack follows Israeli strikes in Lebanon's Beka Valley, 100 kilometres from the border. A cross-border fire has been common since the war on Gaza began. And earlier on Sunday, Israel's military said it has completed another phase of preparations for a possible full-on war with Lebanon and Syria. There are several Israeli airstrikes today in different areas of South Lebanon, from Khiam in the east to Tura in the west, and also in Hasbaya and uh, Kfarkila. This just gives an indication how the situation in Lebanon has been evolving since six months when this conflict started. Yesterday only there were several attacks in the Bekaa Valley, 100 kilometers from the border, and this give us, gives us a kind of an understanding of how the dynamics have been changing over the past months. There are more than 100,000 people now displaced from the border area, where at the beginning the conflict was contained. But now we can't say that it's anymore uh, uh, that situation. It's not anymore contained uh, with, uh, uh, as we've been saying, uh, attacks in the Bekaa Valley and also Hezbollah on the other side, uh, trying to expand the uh, front uh, horizontally, whereas it's uh, targeting uh, military bases in the Golan Heights, which is also something unprecedented in, in previous wars. Over the past six months, there have been more than 50 civilians killed, along with hundreds of Hezbollah and other uh, militants, uh, uh, fighters also killed during this uh, conflict. We are here in Kafra, where uh, this house was destroyed by an Israeli airstrike. Such scenes can be seen in different and many other Lebanese towns across the borders. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. There is nowhere safe in Kharkiv these days. Russian bombs, kamikaze drones, and missiles can strike anywhere and at any time in Ukraine's second largest city. I was standing by the window. Shards of glass injured my face. I fell on the floor. My wife gave me first aid. We came outside and it was complete hell. Neighbors and friends comfort each other. They make temporary repairs to their wrecked homes. But there is mounting fear of increasing Russian attacks involving what ballistic experts say are repurposed Soviet weapons. The so-called glide bomb fired by a jet fighter out of range of most of Ukraine's air defenses. People in this neighborhood say there is no strategic or military site here. There are attacks like these happening day and night across Kharkiv city and the wider region. And for every attack, the fear amongst the people who live here is growing. Across the city, smoke rises from more burnt out homes destroyed this time by an intercepted Russian kamikaze drone. The remnants of people's lives broken and scattered in the dirt. 67-year-old Galina sifts through the rubble of her home. She moved to Ukraine from Belarus almost 50 years ago. Shock. Nothing else but shock, she cries. 
hopelessness. I don't know what to do. I live alone. What can I do? Russia says it doesn't deliberately target civilians and it's trying to hit Ukraine's strategic and energy infrastructure in revenge for Ukrainian attacks across the border. <laughs> Empty words for the people of this city, many of whom, like Galina, are terrified and struggling to cope. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. It was a terrifying scene at a Miami area nightclub. An altercation led to gunfire, which then turned into a full on shootout with police. Innocent bystanders caught in the crossfire. When the bullet stopped, two people were dead. Seven were injured. Victims treated on the sidewalk outside the club. Others rushed to the hospital, including one police officer. Deadly chaos at 3.30 in the morning inside a Miami area nightclub, spilling onto the streets. Shots fired at city police throughout. Nine people shot inside, two of them killed, including the bar's security guard. We start hitting shots, and it wasn't one, it was one after another, after another, after another. Peter Jordan was among those enjoying Doral's Martini Bar, known for its nightlife and one of the few places in the area open till 4 a.m. But this, just 30 minutes before closing. Four to five people shot plus an officer. Police say it started with an altercation. The security guard that was working intervened, and that's when the subject produced a firearm and shot and killed the security guard. Authorities say two Doral police officers then jumped in, exchanging gunfire with the shooter, killing him. One of those officers also catching a bullet in his lower extremity. One of the officers, the one who was struck with four years of service, um, applied a tourniquet on himself immediately after being struck. Six bystanders, five men and a woman, according to police, were shot in the crossfire. You just start thinking right after, right? When you're in the floor, you start thinking, is this going to be at the end? This is... <laughs> I'm not going to die here. You know, we've been covering the news for a long time, but this is a first. A shooting over a guacamole at a crowded restaurant with tons of people eating and in line. It's hard to believe, but we talked to witnesses who saw it all firsthand. <laughs> Chaos at Chipotle. A customer shoots an employee. It was loud, and then we all just ran out because it was, yeah. I mean, wouldn't expect to, uh, I wasn't really thinking about there was going to be a shot, but there was. It happened shortly before 7 o'clock Friday night at the Chipotle on Evergreen in Southfield. Witnesses say it all started out as an argument over food. A source close to the investigation says it was specifically over guacamole. I was just eating a bowl and I heard shouting and then I look over, they're arguing. The One of the workers went to the back, I don't know why, and then when he was in the back, the customer walked around the counter, tried to grab his food and put it in a bag. Um, and then the employee came back and they started fighting and then we heard a gunshot and just ran out as quick as we could. The employee, a 21 year old man shot in the leg, but expected to survive. Meanwhile, the suspect, he took his time getting out. He was probably 30 seconds after it. I was in my car and I saw him just walk out to his car close the door and just drive off like he didn't he didn't speed off or anything it was it was weird to see police arrested the 32 year old man in a parking lot not far away customers who witnessed it all not surprisingly in shock that's not something you would expect like ever I wasn't really thinking I was just trying to get out of there after I hit the shot because it, it got real all of a sudden I still really have not processed it uh, it's gonna take me a while for sure it's I mean it was very scary the Apostle Paul, in his epistle to Timothy, tells us in the last days, society would be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1-5 
But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. New video showing mayhem on the streets of Northern Virginia. I believe that they fully intended to drag her out of that car. One driver hitting a different officer with his car before speeding off. I just got hit by a car. The officer survived and Fairfax police arrested the person they say did it, among others. There's nothing uh, neighborly about what they do. Uh, they do donuts, they drive at high rates of speed. It's happening across the country in states like Florida, California, Illinois. Reckless driving is on the rise and continues to take lives. He loved me unconditionally. 20 year old Jaden Johnson was killed in 2021 when two street racers flew through a red light and into the car he was inside of. His mom telling NBC News their family now paying the price. A part of me died. I'll never be the same person. As states like Tennessee, Florida, and Maryland advance proposed legislation that cracks down on street racing with harsher penalties and steeper fines, Fairfax police have already made several arrests, vowing there will be more. You're going to see our civil disturbance unit because that's exactly what this is. A nationwide problem with no straightforward nationwide solution. One of the many signs that we're living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5-13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24 verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity 
with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.